In our series of stories about Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, we have been profiling several uh, the eateries and uh, things like that of Hispanic culture. And one of these next stories is something that I had a lot of fun doing. I explored the history of the burrito and how San Francisco plays a big role. Although the burrito was said to be first served in Mexico as early as the 1800s, it was in the United States where Mexican Americans changed it to be bigger and easier to take on the go. Now, when you go get a burrito almost anywhere, chances are they'll hand you something like this. Turned out at mom and pop shops and national chains all over the country. It's basically a full Mexican meal inside a flour tortilla wrapped in foil. The recipe for the burrito the way you know it now was modified right here in San Francisco. It even has its own name, the Mission Style Burrito or the Mission Burrito, named after the Mission District here in the city. But where was the first Mission Style Burrito made? Two taquerias here in the Mission District lay claim to it. The first one is El Faro on 20th and Folsom Street. Legend has it the original owners of El Faro made the first super burrito for the firefighters of Station 7 just down the street. The burrito started here like the way we make it, says Ramunda Ramirez, who is the current owner of El Faro. She told me in Spanish she worked for the original owner who made that first big burrito for the firefighters in 1961. I got the super again. What kind of meat? Uh, I got chicken. Loyal customers like this keep coming back. El Faro recently celebrated its 61st year in business. Not too far away is La Cumbre, a taqueria where the sign outside said it's the originator of the mission style burrito. Edward Duran is a second generation owner here. He says the key to the burrito his family made was using the flour tortilla and all the ingredients contained inside. Yeah, initially what happened was that the predominantly the uh, Mexican heritage and the diet as such was based around corn. And so the tortillas used at that time were all corn tortillas. But Raul and Mickey discovered through my grandmother and her recipe for flour tortillas that uh, the corn, when you try and roll them up and try and make them large, uh, they break apart, they fall apart. You end up just wearing your lunch as opposed to eating your lunch. I think there's credence to both stories. I think what makes the Mission Burrito a Mission Burrito is the foil that it's wrapped in and the rice that comes in it and the condiments like guacamole, sour cream, cheese, salsa, um, and so whoever, whichever, uh, you know, La Cumbre or El Faro did that first, I think that's the birth of the real Mission Burrito. Uh, I heard the first one here was, you know, like fla uh, corn tortillas wrapped up and made for the firemen. Nico Madrigal Jankowski is a food writer for SF Gate. He says he's done extensive research into the history of the burrito. It's hard to find a bad taqueria in San Francisco, to be honest, especially if you're in the mission. None of the original firefighters from the 60s, of course, are still around at Station 7, although the current group told me they still visit El Faro. Taquerias are seemingly everywhere in the mission. Well-known ones like Pancho Villa on 16th Street and La Taqueria on Mission Street. Also less well-known places are turning out big mission-style burritos. Wherever you go to get yours, a little bit of San Francisco's Mexican-American culture will be there. The culture of being in the mission is part of what you get when you walk into a San Francisco taqueria. Um, whether it be, you know, the family recipes that are passed down uh, through generations that make the rice or the beans or how to grill the chicken. A culture that is still going strong decades later. In San Francisco, South Castaneda, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And joining us now to talk more about the importance of the burrito to Hispanic culture and Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, it's all kind of intertwined, is Nico Madrigal Jankowski from SF Gate, who's a food writer. Uh, thank you for joining us, Nico. I had a lot of fun doing that story with you. Uh, burritos, you said something that uh, the ingredients inside, that all the stuff is what makes a Mission burrito, a mission burrito. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, if you go to other places, you can find a burrito and it has maybe a lot of meat or uh, just meat, beans, and cheese. But the San Francisco mission style burrito always has rice. Um, it has the meat. It has the condiments of guacamole, salsa, sour cream, cheese. Um, and then it's neatly wrapped up in, you know, a foil little uh, bubble. Yeah.
you can go anywhere in the country and now the, it looks the same it may not be the same but right. that that torpedo thing with the with the foil right. you can get it in Dallas or you can get it in New York true, right true but it started here it started here yeah, yeah. the importance you know a lot of people say well you know you can't uh, basically just talk about Hispanic culture and just focus on the food but what people don't realize is food in our culture is very very important absolutely yeah yeah my my grandma lives in the Central Valley and she's you know uh, grown up going to visit her always at the stove you know cooking a pot of soup or some rice and beans tortillas whatever my mom as well um, great cook and um, our family gatherings are always you know revolve around food so, you know, a uh, long time ago I realized that basically a burrito is just all the ingredients of a Mexican plate wrapped up in a, in a flour tortilla. Mm -hmm. You can still go to these places and get a plate, right? And they can just put that stuff on a plate. What is it about the actual vehicle, the tortilla, that makes it so special? You know, I think uh, it's just like a kind of a product of being in a, an urban uh, city like San Francisco where you got to eat things on the go, you know, and that's what makes it special. You can definitely go and sit down and eat it, and um, but I will... I, I wouldn't recommend cutting it with a knife and fork. I think that's kind of like a faux pas. <laughs> right. um, I think you're going to want to eat it, unwrap the foil, eat it handheld, and that's what makes it special. Now, you mentioned that you uh, pick your burrito shops based on what kind of, uh, you know, let's say if you want a carnitas burrito, you go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Give us a few spots and tell, you, tell us why you go to those spots. Sure, yeah. So, for yeah, like you said, I pick my uh, favorite taquerias based on their meats. And so for carnitas, which is like a crispy deep fried pork, I really like El Buen Sabor because on the um, corner of 18th and Valencia because they throw the carnitas on the plancha again to get a little extra crispy. Um, and they do the same at El Metate in the Mission District, which I really love. Um, for carne asada, I really love El Buen, uh, sorry, Taqueria Cancun um, on uh, mission and 19th um, and there's just something nostalgic about it for me going there late night um, and it's just a big juicy carne asada burrito and then for my hidden gem I think is Taqueria San Francisco um, near uh, 24th and Petrero um, they have a ask for the grilled chicken there and they they don't have guacamole but they do the sliced avocado which I think is a little extra special and those are probably like my top four favorites all right, real quick, yeah. uh, I want to ask you, the price of the average burrito now is what, 12 bucks, something like that? Yeah, maybe somewhere around I there. I remember yeah. when it was, I remember when it was like, <laughs> okay, six bucks, eight yeah. bucks, now yeah. 12 bucks. Yeah. Uh, you think it's going to level off? You know, I don't know. Um, but I also think that, you know, in a city where it's so expensive to live, that these businessmen and women need to price their burritos at a certain price point so they can remain in the city and the mission can, the, the taquerias can remain in the mission as well. It doesn't help that I'll pay almost any price. So exactly, me either. Yeah, I'll Nico, do the same. thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you can find out more of our stories uh, marking Hispanic Heritage Month. You can go to our website, ktvu.com slash Hispanic Heritage. It'll take you directly to a section uh, month to mark this month's celebration. Also, you'll find these stories on our YouTube channel.